Now, let's spend more time talking about the anterior pituitary and its hormones. Let's get more into detail about this. Are we okay with the overview of what we've been talking about? All right, so let's introduce a few of these, these hormones and talk about the diseases with this to help you remember why these are important. Now, the anterior pituitary gland is going to release seven major hormones. These hormones are also referred to as trophic hormones. They're also called trophins. We all know that in order for you to master A and P, you got to know how to say one structure about 12 different ways, right? <laughs> and this is no exception, okay? I would know them all, go for the one you know how to spell, but if you know it as like tropic hormones and didn't know it as tropins, and I call it tropins on an exam or you take it in another course, you need to know all the other terms. So that's why we put them on there. So these are all the hormones that get released from the anterior pituitary. They're referred to as tropins. Okay? And they're going to regulate hormone secretions of target organs that are out there, which I kind of introduced, but we're going to get into it. So let's talk about the first one, growth hormone. It's also known as somatostatin. I'm sorry, somatotrophin. Sorry, somatostatin is a totally different thing. Somatotrophin, or GH. And what this is going to do, it's going to stimulate cell growth in all body cells. So this will also increase height and weight, okay, especially in puberty. So these are the things it's going to do, which I'm going to talk about, okay, here's the functions of the of, of GH. Now, it's pretty easy to understand. Growth hormone is going to make things grow. So what about if you have too much of it? An excess amount, a tumor that might be doing that. You have an idea what's going on. But we have to throw in a little curveball here. The manifestation is different if the growth plates in the bones have fused or not. Remember the old growth plates, epiphyseal plates? It happens, fuse, complete fusion is usually about 21 years old, 20, 21 years old. Okay? And then once that fuses, you're not going to grow lengthwise anymore. But we've got the appositional growth that happens on the side to get width. But that's important because we have the osteoblast and osteoclast activity working together. Because we've got to get the calcium out of the bloodstream and so forth. But if you have too much of this, it depends. The condition will depend on if that growth plates, the epiphyseal plates, have fused or not. So we're looking at an excess amount in a child versus an excess amount in an adult. Let's say a 12-year-old versus a 42-year-old. We have two different manifestations. All right, so symptoms that differ if the growth plates have fused or not. We have something called gigantism. And this is in children, when the epiphyseal plates have not fused, they're going to continue to grow. Now, what happens here is that these children grow astronomically tall. they got long bones that are very long. So these people are very tall, but they look like they're in proportion. They may have longer arms and longer legs, but they're in proportion. As opposed to somebody who has, let's say, a tumor of this area at um, 42 years old. Growth plates have already fused, so they, your bones can't grow this way, instead they grow this way. So they get spaded hands, and I'll show you pictures of this. Okay? So they have something we call acromegaly. Acro means limbs, megaly means enlarged. So it's just the whole body really is getting enlarged. But they use, we usually see the features in their face a lot more. All right? They get facial features. They get their tongue is very big. 
their jaw bones get very big. They usually lose their teeth because the spaces to hold the teeth get big and they just fall out. They have big lips. Ears get big. There's skin. Remember, it's not just bone. It's skin also that, ex uh, that expands. So they have thicker areas here. They've got a protruding jaw that comes out. <clears throat> Keep in mind, growth hormone goes all over the body. So the heart even gets big. So it goes with the body. You've got a bigger body, the heart gets body to push that blood out. But there's a little curveball on that, and I'll explain that in a moment. Okay? So that's what happens over here. They get enlarged hands, face, jaw, and they usually die due to heart failure. Might as well talk, talk about it now. Your heart, which we'll get into in a couple weeks, has four chambers in it. And the chambers will hold the blood in there. Okay? Fair enough. So in a person who's got acromegaly, their bodies grow and their heart grows. Sounds good. All right? The rule of thumb is your fist is as big as your heart. Andre the Giant, who I'll talk about later, all right, he was a wrestler and an actor and stuff. Um, one of my friends, friend knew him. And his, when he makes a fist, uh, or he's dead now, but when he made a fist and he held a can of beer, you couldn't see the can. So you can imagine how big his hand was. That hand fist is as big as his heart. So it sounds like, oh, this guy is huge. I think his shoe size is like 22. I mean, he's big, big guy. I mean, he's easily his head is up there, okay? But this big guy has a big heart. And he did have a big heart of... Literally speaking also, but, but he has a big heart to put all this blood out. But here's where the problem is. You, it sounds like it, it's reasonable, but it's not. As the heart gets bigger, it's getting bigger here. Right? However, this muscle here is also getting big like this. So theoretically, that chamber is getting small. You understand? So even though the heart muscle is getting big, it can't push that much blood out. It causes high blood pressure, and they usually die of heart disease. Because it needs to pump out a lot of blood to this massive body when you're only getting drops of blood coming out. Okay? So this is gigantism. All right, so here he's on over six feet tall. He's on like 14 or 15 years old. Now that could be normal. Hey, you got tall parents. All right, but we have this curve that we like to watch between the height and weight. And if you fall off the curve, it could very well be his parents, but it'll be wrong and not checking to see if this person has uh, a tumor in his brain. We'll just check a, a GH level and see what's going on. If it's normal, then it's probably because of his genes. This is acromegaly. I can look at people and get an idea of what people have. I already know what you have. And I don't do that. I've done that before many times. This is just what I do. And I said this in my other classes too. I'll be sitting in the subway in New York City and just there for 20 minutes. And I'm like, what else am I going to do? I'm looking at people. I don't pay out of that. You know, you're just when you get into the medical field, you just are trained and wired in that to pitch for that view. But that's what it is. You see the protruding chin over here, the big ears, the, you know, the, there's extra foreskin on the forehead and stuff. Okay, the tongue is very big. You can see it like that. All right, you see the jaws like protruding like that. Okay. Um, tongue is big. They blacked out the eyes because they wanted to protect the innocent. They don't want people to know who she is. Like, I can tell. It looks scarier though. <laughs> um, this is showing that teeth fall out because of spaces that are holding the uh, the teeth uh, get bigger and fold out. Um, this also here, um, you see the hands. That's what I mean by hands are spaded. They're short and stumpy. All right, uh, and that's basically what it, what it, what's happening over there. Here's a normal foot, and here's a foot with acromegaly. See the extra skin that's all over here. All right, so you can pick out with those things. Here's a person. This would be a, a teen uh, clinician. Here's a person that comes to, just give me an example, comes to me and just a routine exam, never seen him before, he's coming for his first, and 
He feels fine. He's just here for an annual checkup. Lo and behold, his blood pressure is 210 over 140, which is pretty high. Now, a keen doctor, a keen clinician, nurse practitioner, physician assistant, nurse, will look at this and say, I don't know, but this is my first time meeting you, and this could be you. Lips are big, it looks like the jaw's protruding a little bit, there's a foreskin, or not foreskin, but uh, the forehead has a skin that looks thick over there. It could be him. I never met him before, this could just be him. But I would just ask him, can you do me a favor? Uh, we got to get your blood pressure down. But do you have in your wallet, do you have any older pictures of you? Not too old, like a year or two. And then he pops out this. Here two years ago, he graduated college. Here a year ago, he got married. Do you see something that's changing? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things on here. This and that is the same person. Now, this looks like maybe a 40-year difference or a 20, not two-year difference. Gradually, he's changing. Do you see that? These are the things to be aware of, to say, hey, look, there's other reasons why you have high blood pressure. Not just because maybe your heart is slower, maybe there's other things going on. And a keen person will pick up on these things. Okay? Did you say that the aging, that he's the rapid aging in that or no? I don't think so. No. Not like that, not like... That's too fit. And then you're compounding it with high blood pressure. I'm not saying that's the reason, but I'm telling you, when I get this, yes, I'm going to find out why the high blood pressure is up and I want to control that, but I would be wrong not doing a GH level. Do you see? That's all. Just to do that lousy, I don't know, $30 check, just do it. Why not? That's the reason why. And, you, you know, you have to document everything. And he'll be happy. Instead of just giving a medication, if we could actually remove that tumor, then he won't be on high blood pressure medication. We took the source out. Right? All right. Um, Tony Robbins. Does anybody know who he is? He's from that movie Shadow How, and he's this motivational speaker. Right? Um, girls go goggly over him. He's very tall. He has a deep voice. Uh, plus, he's a motivational speaker. He's like, you know, he, he lures people in there. And if you've seen the movie Shallow Hell, and they kind of exaggerated with his uh, luring uh, uh, feature. But uh, interesting phenomenon with him. Uh, he was a very, he's a very tall. He's still living. Uh, he's a very tall person. Uh, but he has a lot of features of acromegaly. Right? He's got the jaw over here. His teeth. I don't think fell out or whatever. But it's like a, a, a I could it's almost like a box kind of smile. All right. Um, but what happened with him about 22, 21, 22 years old, something like that, um, for whatever reason, he went to go get himself checked, high blood pressure, whatever it was, and they noticed that he had an uh, anterior pituitary tumor. Except that when he was diagnosed, it already was killed off. Now, the reason why it got killed off was because it fell a person. As it was getting bigger and bigger, the blood supply going to that tumor, so a blood vessel, as it got bigger and bigger, it, the tumor itself pressed against that, that blood vessel to the bone. So it kind of kinked it, and it kind of decreased the amount of blood flow to the tumor so much that it killed the tumor. So here at 22 years old, whatever he was, they said we could do two, one or two different things. First off, you're clear. The cancer's there, but it's dead. We could either, and you're not going to get any more features from it, but we could do one or two different things. We could go in and remove the dead tissue, or we could just do a, a CT scan for you once a year and make sure it doesn't come back. He opted for plan B. And that's what happened with him. Okay? For Andre the Giant, that's what I was talking about before, Okay, he's been in uh, Princess Bride, and he's been in a lot of different things. He's really tall. He had an interesting case because he has features of gigantism and acromegaly. So he had this tumor. He's from France. He's, he had this tumor, but he didn't get himself checked. So he had this tumor. So as a teenager, he grew to an enormous height, and growth plates fused, and now he grew this way. 
when he became famous and all, that's when he said, okay, what, I, I don't know if it was removed or whatever it was, but he got his fame and fortune because of his condition. But he died. He died of heart failure for this reason. The heart just couldn't take on the whole body. So we have speeches of both. Yeah? No, it just sits there, and it, it just shrinks down. It's necrotic tissue. It just sits there. Um, the problem is, is that sometimes that dead tissue, you don't want it to. It could go into the bloodstream, and then you've got this embolus that can go through there, or it could just shrivel up and become nothing. So it's one of those chances that you want to take. But it's in the brain. You know, if you want to do brain surgery to remove that dead tissue, just keep an eye on it. So, so say like was Andre the Giant, and was hit gigantic. And if he was to go on like a very well regimented, um, heavily like um, followed and supervised cardiovascular program, and strength training program to promote not only cardiovascular health and heart health, but like less vascular hypertrophy. In theory, would his heart have held up? I mean, he was a wrestler. He was probably doing stuff anyway. Right, right, right. Or I don't there. think so, because no. this is not going to... you got to... I want to say cutting this out. The cavity is just too small. Mm -hmm. It's like um, like a freezer. You know what I'm saying? Where the freezer, if you leave it in there, the frost gets bigger and bigger. And, and the cubby holes that you put stuff in, you don't have much space because it's just growing inside the freezer, growing inside the heart. So the only way you can really do this is to heart replacement, but you're not going to find a match. Yeah. Or if they could do this now, um, make an artificial heart for that. You know, there's um, there's talk about, uh, right now they're doing a lot of research with doing, you know the 3D printers? Yeah. Yeah. Right. They're doing research on trying to make body parts with that, like valve. I, I know they're doing valves, yeah. artificial valves. Not a whole heart, but you know, in the future, something to keep your eye on. It might not be something like that. That would be because that's not going to be growing mm -hmm. with that. You've got to keep those cavities to maintain this huge, this huge body. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Other questions? Good questions. No? Okay. All right. So that's if you have too much growth hormone. Okay. Now the other thing I just want to mention, going back to A and P one, um, there's the optic chiasm. Right, it's the bottom of the brain. There's the optic chiasm, and they lead up to the eyes. Here's the pituitary gland that sits right next to the optic chiasm. Now look what's going to happen here. If that, op if that pituitary gland enlarges, it'll press on that where the optic tracts are crossing over. And it's going to affect the way the person sees. In this case, I know my class, we did it, but when it presses on that, their peripheral vision disappears. They have like tunnel vision. So here you have somebody, like that patient I showed you before, has high blood pressure. And I asked them, um, you know, I just, to, to, to see if that person has peripheral vision gone, I'll just go stand behind them and I'll wiggle my fingers over here and say, tell me when you start seeing them. Oh, I see him now. Well, that's pretty far. I could see him over here. You see what I'm saying? So you put all this together by the features of what he has. He has high blood pressure. He has visual disturbances. That's why you've got to document everything over there and show who you are. All right? And when you do that, the insurance company will say, yeah, then just do the test, even though we'll give you some hard time. Just, you know, just pay for it. But it's being on it. You've got to show, you know, prove your argument why I want to do this test. Okay. Questions about that? Okay. It's called tunnel vision, but really it's by temporal hemianopsia. I won't ask you about that. But you should know that there's some um, eye disturbances, visual disturbances. All right. So what about the opposite? What if we have a decrease of growth hormone? If you have a stroke to the area and it's not going to produce growth hormone, what happens here. All right, so in children, we have something we call dwarfism. Now, there's a lot of reasons why dwarfism would occur, okay? Achondroplasia is the most common one, which you should learn in AP1, but I'll show you that in a moment. But what about this? Pituitary dwarfism. 
Basically, what's going to happen is there's going to be less growth hormone going to all your tissue. So in this case, they're going to have, they're just going to be little people. In other words, they're in proportion. Their head is proportionate with their torso, proportional with the legs. It's just a small person. Achondroplasia, which I think I have over here, dwarfism. Yeah, achondroplasia is the most common form, and that should be fought in AMP1. What happens here is the growth plates fuse too early. They fuse at two years old or three years old. So they can't, their long bones can't grow lengthwise anymore. But their head and their torso, that's not long bones. So that's going to grow appropriately. So you have the head and you have the torso as an adult size, but then you have the arms and even the fingers, the long bones, are short. So they're not in proportion. Right? And I'll show you pictures of what that is. All right? Pituitary dwarfism, that's what I'm trying to explain to you. That's where the whole body is. So this is achondroplasia. Okay? You know this guy from Game of Thrones, right? You can see here, the head is the same size as the adult head. The torso is the same size, but the arms and the fingers, sure. the legs and the feet, you can't see the toes, they're short. Those are where the long bones are. That affects the growth plate. That's the most common form of dwarfism. Okay? Pituitary dwarfism is because a growth hormone is not coming out. And you can see here, the head is in, it's not the same size as the adult. Well, that's an adult too, of an adult size. So, you know, people say, oh, how cute that, keep in mind, it's probably about 50 years old here. Okay? That head is the same, is in proportion with its torso and legs. It's just a short person. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Just because it goes to all the tissues at the same time. The fingers, the legs, the arms are all in proportion of what the head and the torso is. Okay? Okay, I look at people, I have an idea what's going on. I wouldn't go up to them and say, oh, I know what you got. <laughs> you got low GH. <laughs> like, I you know. All right, questions about that? All right, thyroid stimulating hormone. This is another hormone that comes out of the anterior pituitary. I'm not going to spend too much time on this until we get to the thyroid, but this is going to tell the thyroid gland to release T3 and T4, which controls metabolism. Okay. We also have adrenal corticotropic hormone. All right, ACTH. This is going to tell the adrenal cortex to secrete its three hormones with a majority of cortisol coming out. Okay. We also have FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. In females, it acts on the ovaries to develop these egg sacs called follicles produces the mature egg or ova, and secretes estrogen. In males, it acts on the testicles or testes, and this is what's going to make sperm. The sister hormone to FSH is LH, also dealing with reproductive system. In females, this is going to trigger ovulation, and once that egg pops out of the ovary, that's ovulation, the area that it just came out of the ovary is an important area. It has a new name. It's called the corpus luteum. And that corpus luteum is also going to release hormones, which we'll get into in the reproductive system. Okay? But yes, hint, hint. LH triggers ovulation. In males, it secretes testosterone from the testes or testicles. Okay? So you can see, if you're doing that chart I gave you earlier, you're going to have to split up things because male and female, right? Prolactin is another hormone from the intravenous cortex. I'm sorry, from the uh, anterior pituitary gland. And this is going to uh, make the milk glands grow. Okay? And it's going to make the... Um, milk, it's going to make the milk. It's not going to inject it, it's going to just make the milk. And then this other one, melanocytes, uh, stimulating hormone, uh, it's not truly a significant one. Uh, it's really not produced in, in uh, adults. However, in pregnancy, 
uh, remember, this is going to uh, make the melanin sites produce melanin and become darker. In pregnancy, it does stimulate the melanin sites a little bit more. And if you've been pregnant, maybe you have freckles that became more pronounced. Uh, the areola uh, around the nipple, they get darker. And in most women who are pregnant, and if you've been pregnant, or you see your mom and she's not wearing uh, a shirt, you know, like you can see her belly, there's a line that grows from, a darkened line that grows from the pubic symphysis up to the belly button. We call it linea nigra, which means black line. And that is absolutely death defined that you've been pregnant sometime in your lifetime. Most women get that line, and once your pregnancy is over, it usually stays there. It, it dims a little bit, but it was always there, or it's, it, it usually stays there. Okay, so be careful what you tell your doctor that you were never pregnant, and we see that line there. That's why we get an idea. Of, you know, just be honest with the doctor, all right? We want to help you, you know? But if we have an idea that you're lying already, like, uh, you know, just be careful with that, all right? We're not going to catch on that, but we, we know that we need to ask these questions in roundabout way to get that, all right? But that's what that is. You don't have to raise your hand, but yeah, if you know someone who has it, that's what that is, that you've been pregnant sometime in your life, all right? So, all right? Um, all right, so let's talk about the posterior pituitary gland. All right, we've talked about this already, so I'm not going to bore you anymore with the antidiuretic hormone. All right, you understand what I wrote up here, uh, reabsorbs water from the kidneys and makes your blood pressure go up. Do make sure you understand the mechanism of that as I drew that for you. Okay, and it's also known as vasopressin. Vaso, vaso meaning blood vessels pressing like they're pressing down on it, constricting it. That's how I remember it. All right. And again, they're showing you uh, the functions of it here, which I did already see. Now, if you have too much ADH, right? Let's do this again, all right, very quickly. ADH, antidiuretic hormone means you're not going to pee, right? So that's going to make your urine go down which means that your blood volume will go up, which means that blood pressure will go up, right? And then I also show that vasoconstriction of blood vessels, right? It's gonna do that too, which will lead to high blood pressure, right? Now, if you have too much ADH. Look what's going to happen here. If you produce too much of this ADH, and the most common reason of this, believe it or not, is lung cancer. Well, what happens here, it's called syndrome of inappropriate ADH, or SIADH. And the most common reason is lung cancer. MCC stands for most common cause. There's a certain type of lung cancer that produces an ADH-like hormone. And it's going to turn on the ADH receptors in the kidney. That's what happens here. Okay? Interesting phenomenon. So if you're going to increase ADH, what's going to happen to your urine? It's almost like you're not even going to pee at all. What happens to the blood volume? Highly going up, which means it's going to raise your blood pressure so much that it's going to cause hypertension, high blood pressure. Make sense? Okay. Now, what about if you have a deficiency of ADH? Now, this deficiency is called diabetes insipidus. Now, this is not the same diabetes as grandma's got. This is a rare occasion. Well, grandma's got is probably something called diabetes mellitus, which we'll get into without insulin. Diabetes insipidus, for whatever reason, you're making a decrease of ADH. Maybe a stroke to the posterior pituitary, and you're cutting off blood supply, and now the ADH is not being produced. 
So you're going to decrease the amount of ADH coming out of here, which means what happens to the amount of volume of urine? It's going to go up. Which means what happens to your blood volume? It goes down. What happens to your blood pressure? Yeah, you're going to have something called hypotension. You have low blood pressure. Now, I don't know why they call it diabetes to actually confuse you, but I don't know if diabetes means that you're going to pee a lot. Because in both diabetes mellitus, which is what grandma's got, or diabetes insipidus, you're going to pee a lot. The only difference is, is that diabetes insipidus means no glucose in the urine. Diabetes mellitus means it's, the, the urine has sugar in it. And back in the 1800s, that's how they tested it. All right? I wouldn't recommend that, but hey. But you, that's, what, that's the major difference between the two of, well, not the major difference, it's also the mechanism. But that's what that is. So diabetes insipid is very rare, but you should understand the. And really, if you understand the function of how ADH works, then having too much or too little, that's easy stuff. Right? It just gives, if you understand excess and you understand the deficiency, I know you know the function. It gives the normal function meaning. That's why I put this clinical stuff in here. Okay? So if you're losing a lot of urine, you're losing a lot of water from your body, you're going to get very thirsty to put to replenish your body. So polydipsy is a fancy word for increase in thirst. Polyuria is that you're going to increase the amount of urine that you're producing. And in both diabetes mellitus and diabetes insipidus, you will get that both. But this is very rare that that should happen. These are the cases you would find on house and Grace anatomy and things like that. But don't throw that out. It's, it's a possibility. Okay? Cool? Alright, and the other hormone that comes out of the posterior pituitary is oxytocin. Keep in mind, ADH and oxytocin, where are they made? Where are they made? Hypothalamus. Where are they secreted? Posterior pituitary. Good. Okay? Oxytocin is going to stimulate the uterus to contract, to give those wonderful contractions, to push the baby out, and also this is what's going to eject the milk from the breast. Not make the milk. Go back to the milk. Right. Okay? And that's just showing you where the target. Okay? 